Hello, chemist and biochemist. Today's video, I'm going to be going over how to draw a dipeptide. So that's a molecule that's made up of two amino acids. I'm also going to show you what it looks like and the way that you commonly see it displayed. Um, so what you're going to see, you know, a way that you can identify that molecule. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, the molecule that we're going to draw is a dipeptide that consists of the amino acid proline and aspartic acid. Okay, now what I was saying was you can display this molecule in a couple of different ways or signify this molecule in a couple of different ways. What I've, what I've picked here is to show this amino acid or this dipeptide with the three letter code for proline and aspartate and aspartic acid. You can also see this with the full names, proline and aspartic acid. Or you could use the single letter codes, in which case this dipeptide would simply be displayed as PD. Okay, now this is a dipeptide. What I am always going to do whenever I'm drawing a dipeptide is think, okay, I've got two amino acids that I need to worry about. So my backbone should be as follows. N, C, C, N, C, C. So there is the basic backbone for my dipeptide. Now, I'm also going to go ahead and indicate my alpha carbons here and here, respectively. Now, after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify my N termini. Now, this one is a little bit tricky because of the fact that proline is my N terminal amino acid because it's written first. Remember, whenever you look at a, a polypeptide, you always read it from the N termini to the C termini. So our N terminal pep amino acid is proline, our C terminal amino acid is aspartic acid. So proline has kind of a unique R group in that it is going to go CH2, 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 and then back to my N termini. Okay, so there's my R group for proline. My R group for aspartic acid is going to look like this. CH2, C, double bonded O, and OH. I'm going to draw this, or the way that I'm going to start this out is I'm drawing this molecule at a pH of 1. So everything's going to be protonated. So I would like to draw my R groups first, and I really only did that because of proline. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to each of the different atoms within my backbone and kind of fill those in. So my alpha carbon, that's where I'm going to start first, my N-terminal alpha carbon. It has a total of three bonds to it. Got to put one more hydrogen on it. Now my alpha carbon for my C-terminal uh, amino acid. Done. So both of my alpha carbons are content. They're good to go. The next thing that I need to do is account for my peptide bond. Well, my peptide bond is going to look like this. I have a double bonded oxygen and a single bonded nitrogen. And that nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons because a peptide bond is basically never going to have a positive charge. And if it would, that would destabilize it. And the reason for that is the peptide bond, well, it's resonance stabilized. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is go on to my C-terminal carboxylic acid of my C-terminal peptide. So that's gonna look like this. Remember, this is drawn out of pH of one. The last thing that I need to worry about and the last thing that I need to work on is my N termini for my proline. Okay, what I notice about that N termini of my proline is I already have two bonds to it. This is going to be fully protonated, therefore it's going to have two hydrogens and a positive charge, okay? Because those two hydrogens will give me an overall positive charge. So this molecule as it's displayed is what it looks like at a pH of one. Now. Of course, if you adjust the pH of this solution, you have to take into account the pKa's. And I'm going to go ahead and come up with rough pKa's. My ionizable groups, I'm going to go ahead and draw boxes around them. Now, my ionizable groups, those pKa values, will be, let's see, for my C termini, that's going to be about 2. Point, I'll call it 2.1, a rough number there. My our group for my carboxyl or for my aspartic acid is going to have a pKa of approximately 3.4. My N termini for proline is going to be about, let's call it 8.9. Okay, so if I wanted to change this molecule 
and instead display it at a pH of seven. Well, there are a couple of parts of this molecule that are going to change. The first one is in the first group that's going to be deprotonated. As my pH rises from one to seven, well, my C terminal R group, or my C terminal, uh, my C termini of my peptide. So I've got a negative charge there. The next group that I'm going to have to worry about is the next group or the next highest pKa. And that would be my carboxylic acid on my R group for aspartic acid. That's going to have a negative charge. So what this is ultimately going to lead to is at a pH of 7, the most common form of this molecule, the predominant form of this molecule, is going to have an overall charge of negative 1. And the reason for that is we've got a negative charge here, a negative charge here, and a positive charge here. So one positive cancels out a negative, leaving behind only one negative. My proline, well, that R group goes back to my N termini of my peptide. The remainder of that R group doesn't have a charge. There's nothing else on this molecule that has an overall charge. All right, well, I hope this was helpful as you look into drawing a dipeptide. Have a good one.